Thank you, Alyssa. Um, John Dominey has previously published two collections of short stories, two novels, a collection of poetry, and a translation from the Italian of Tullio Ferranti's memoir, Books and Rough Business. He has won awards in all genres and has been the recipient of an NEA fellowship and an Iowa Major Artist Award. All four volumes of Dominey's earlier fiction have been reissued this year in e-version from Zank Books. As to how we came to write Moviola, a collection of very funny stories about inventing, pitching, producing, directing, acting, or promoting movies during the present age of corporate movie making, Dominey claims no direct Hollywood experience, but, but this is his, his uh, humanizing factoid. Back in the 90s, at a time when he was scrambling to figure out what to do with the rest of his life, he did work briefly in the movie business in Naples, Italy, which he calls roughly the polar opposite of Hollywood. Among the people on his assignments was film director and writer Paolo Sorrentino, later an Oscar winner for best foreign language film, uh, La Grande Bellezza, which some of us might, might have seen as The Great Beauty. Moviola, also from Zank Books, has been described as a madcap satire of movie making whose originality is its comic burlesque of voices from a period of the industry. Reviewers have called Moviola <coughs> Reviewers have called Moviola a glory, a fascination, a book to devour, thoroughly entertaining, and a new shriek for a new century. John Donnelly. How wonderful to be here. Thank you very much. In yours, Alyssa, uh, the uh, the older poem, the siblings, the pool table, it's hard not to hear we real cool in that. <laughs> we real cool. And uh, mixed professed, I really must urge on you, a hilarious academic, academic, uh, well, you heard it, an academic burlesque, but also, of course, a grappling for something more serious, or something of value in there. Uh, I'm going to read from Mugliola. I should say that uh, Elizabeth also uh, quoted her own review, uh, and it's a very good review, very gratifying. Uh, and she's already told you what it's about. I was just thinking about, among other things, how we all seem to be Hollywood insiders now. We know the, uh, we know the, uh, we know what a storyboard is, or the storyboards plural. We know uh, we know what a bankable actress is, and, uh, and so I begin to think in that language. And uh, I will read you the uh, I'll read you about two thirds of one of the uh, stories. Assassins storyboards to date assassin storyboards to date. And what we have so far is we begin with the down to earth, the romance angle. A girl is about to give up on finding a decent guy. She figures it'll never get anywhere. The games never end. Begin where anyone can make the connection. That's this whole first board. Just another girl sick of the same old, all the more of a drag because she knows what she's got to offer. She's old enough to know, but she's still good looking, sure, hot when she wants to be, maybe put a little edge on her. She's had a life, boyfriends, maybe girlfriends, plus she's got degrees on the wall and they say she's some kind of doer of science and she's got a laugh. That's important. We could go as old as 35. The point is, when she gets it going with this guy, our guy, 
It's got to line up nice and natural with the romance. It's got to feel like this is it, the boyfriend she's been waiting for, and all we need to suggest the trouble, I mean our principal twist, the fact that he's a highly trained secret government assassin. The only hint we need for that here at the start is the right shadows during the meet. We're thinking a bookstore meet, a place like that. We kill two birds with one stone. Ha, ah, sure. But see, we establish brains and a basis. I mean the basis between our guys. We were thinking maybe poetry, the stuff, dream, the we were thinking maybe poetry, the stiff that dreams are made on. Oh, it's stuff? The stuff that dreams are made in, whatever, Google. The point is that's what drives the meat. And our girl's so taken by this sweet guy. He's got the poetry and he's got the abs. We'll put him in a snug white tee. And she's so bowled over, she doesn't notice the shadows. For this, we see some way high old bookstore shelves so his face is all in shadow. Our girl never sees him clearly. She never has a clue about how this great new guy spent a couple of years up at the compound. Fatal Blows 101, right through the seminar in body disposal. And after that, he did a, at least a couple more rotations out in the alleyway the parking garage, the uppermost window of a little used warehouse, carrying a high-powered rifle with a laser scope, carrying a short black Beretta with a long silver silencer, whatever, flashbacks, carrying a page of box scores on which the ink conducts an electric charge that induces heart seizure, carrying a condom, lubricated with a penetrating toxic gel. But not for our girl, no, she's not a target. It's the real deal between these two and we can never lose sight of that. It's our bottom line arc. For the two of them, every orgasm's as distinct and gorgeous as a snowflake. <laughs> That's that's why we can't have him, have her see him kill somebody either. Not first thing, not for her first irrefutable clue of what her new perfect sweetie does for a living. First would be something like this next board here. She discovers this strange condom and she goes all horrified thinking maybe he's cheating but then she's not the usual helpless woman wronged. I mean, who might be wrong. Remember the degrees. Remember the lack. A room full of white oblong apparatus, each with its own blinking red light. <clears throat> and so she can stay late one night and establish scientifically whether this man, who she believed was a true and immutable boyfriend, was instead just more of the same old. She's got latex, latex gloves and the latest technology and chemical analysis, plus the kind of heart you need to ride herd on all those knobs and buttons. But next thing you know, it turns out this girl's going to need the heart of a saber-toothed tiger, a mama saber-toothed tiger, because she's sitting over a lethal condom right there between the trips of her, the clips of her trace analyzer. And she's learned the truth. Science doesn't lie. Her guy might be highly trained, but he's no longer so secret. And with that, the signals, the, with that, the signals give off some kind of takes charge. She's snapping off the gloves or whipping out the ponytail. Thirty fucking five, and she's ready to start all over. We can <laughs> use the light here again. 
We see the lab with an entire wall of windows, sweatshop style with the iron frames, and at this moment, practically white with sun in this glowing visual metaphor as what she must do burns through the boxes of her life to date and turns her into a total babe for a moment, showing cleavage under the smock while her eyelids flutter and her lips go ajar, a woman in the middle of another snowflake while she realizes this is the one and only real deal in her life, and there's just one way to keep it, and that's to stand by her man, shoulder to shoulder, assassins together. <laughs> so, <laughs> then, then we're into the compound. You see, she <coughs> traded one smart for another. The karate uniforms, the recruits wear, and she's good in this outfit too, easy on the eyes and nasty on her feet. Her trainers have reached the point of pulling the criminally insane in off the streets for her, and our girl handles every one of them. She faces off with some Aryan brother musclehead, and she flips him over one shoulder and then freezes him with a slippered foot on his tattooed throat. And then, what if, split screen, she kicks the legs out from under some shack-sized OG and does a knee drop into his groin. He's a jelly donut after that. <clears throat> Finally, some dry ice in a suit and tie eases into the room. Some alpha exec who watches our girl from between the soundproofing baffles. In the meantime, she goes straight at some hell's angel psycho with one of those stares like he was born without eyelids, like he's four parts reptile. And before we realize what's happened, she blinds him with a flick of her between bouts talcum powder and then spins him and hunkering up against his back, isolates one of his kidneys with razor sharp steel tipped nails. When the suit steps out from behind the baffles, he might allow himself a bit of slow applause, whatever, actor's prerogative. But in face, this CEO or whoever has got to remain the ice man, the dry ice man. And when he declares our girl is field ready, it's got to come across without affect. A foregone conclusion, karate doesn't lie. And what have we just been watching, if not one highly trained, secret, government motherfucker? So, after that, the boss man takes a moment to show off his own chops, finishing the girl's latest victim when the biker with the lizard lids and a brain to match comes out of his paralysis with a roar. No problem, we're not for the man with the, with the corner office, not in this firm, and you can barely follow as he whips off his striped tie and uses it as a garage. Don't mess with Wall Street. <laughs> then a moment later, this old hand is thoroughly executive again, the vice president in charge of his purse, and the light goes flat while he finds a mirror maybe a pair, a pair of mirrored sunglasses off the big OG to check the fresh knot in his tie. And with his back to our girl, the CO gives her her first assignment. The kind of light we need here. It's so flat, it turns the colors trashy. It's like for a training film, because for our girl, it's all about going to school suddenly. It's learning the hard way as she hears about an agent breaking bad out there, a troubling case, a former top man who may even have gone rogue. I mean, up at the compound, a recruit can't have a boyfriend, can she? And see why we keep that information under wraps? If we'd sent our girl's new man back to school with her, then what would be left for the boards? We'd have two moves left, and after all that, we could, after that, all we could do is make sure we got the gaffer's name right in the credits, 
Our first move would be pomp and circumstance, and our second, here comes the bride. We can't leave the bottom line lying there, just lying there, not after we've gotten this far. And once our girl goes into training, think about it, she's got to keep her mind on higher things. In fact, that's where the honchos in their suits and ties want her to keep her mind. Her and all the other apprentice hit persons, they want them all the time on task. And then on top of that, there's how our Miss Lonesome tonight, former Miss Lonesome tonight, how she feels about the honey that got her here in the first place. A great boyfriend requires great sacrifice. A true girlfriend has to be born again, hardening the mind and humiliating the flesh, plus the flesh of a dozen or so bad guys in from the street. It's all there in the start, the romance. And once that's in place and the lighting's working, then anyone can make the connection. Anyone can feel what the girl feels when the first man she's ordered to kill is her man, the bod from the bookstore, the stuff that made guys dream on. <laughs> you see how we need the surprise through this part? We need a twist or two under wraps unless we're going to return to square one. And it's beautiful the way it works through this part because what did he know, the boyfriend, the first killer on screen? What did he know about his girl's sacrifice? All he has is her smock on the laboratory floor and some hard to figure traces in the apparatus. And now we see him shedding tears over those red lights. They go on blinking, but it's just not the same. And he's even <laughs> weeping over the keyboard as he uses her credit card to charge a few high ticket items. Identity theft usually flushes out the actual card holder. But the only calls that come in are pitches for debt consolidation. The recorded voice is always a few seconds out of, out, out of sync, and soon enough, our man's that way himself. Off kilter, because whatever his deal is, this part was real for him, too. And when he's up in another warehouse window with the rifle in his hands, suddenly he can't tell the infrared crosshairs from the nearest bar neon ladies two for one and he started to grind fresh green bud into his poison filtered cigarettes and then tear off the filters and smoke the things himself a secretly trained high government assassin the last time he used the condom he almost put it on inside out <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i'll stop there the story continues